Let's take a closer look at the male reproductive system, beginning with the primary sex organs, the testes, and then moving on to the ducts and glands that are responsible for moving the sperm from the testes into the female reproductive system. These are the secondary sex organs, and they include the epididymis, the ductus deferens, seminal vesicle, prostate gland, bubble urethral gland, and urethra, as well as the tissue that makes it possible for erection and ejaculation to take place. Let's go to the testes. The testes are found in the scrotum. And this is really odd at first thought, because why would you take such a valuable organ, something that assures the continuation of the human race, and dangle it outside the body? It just doesn't make sense. Until we consider temperature. This is the key. Sperm need to develop at a temperature lower than body temperature. Body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Sperm need to develop at 35 degrees Celsius. In order to cool the testes down so that the sperm can develop, they have to be held outside of the body. There are a couple of important mechanisms that maintain the correct temperature of the testes. One of these is a structure called the pampiniform plexus. The pampiniform plexus is a network of veins that surrounds the testicular artery. The testicular artery is carrying very warm blood from the aorta down to the testes. This would warm up the testes and cause problems with sperm production if we don't cool down the warm blood in the testicular artery. So we use the cool blood in the testicular veins. This blood is cool because it's been in the scrotum, away from the main heat of the body. We use this cool blood and send it through the pampiniform plexus around the testicular artery, and the cool blood in the veins cools the blood in the artery before it reaches the testes. That helps to keep the testes at 35 degrees Celsius instead of 37. Another important mechanism for maintaining the proper temperature of the testes are some smooth muscles that are found associated with the testes and scrotum. There's a layer of smooth muscle called the cremaster muscle that surrounds each testis. And there's another layer of smooth muscle called the dartus muscle that is found under the skin of the scrotum. These muscles receive signals from the brain related to temperature. When the testes are too cool, that stimulates the dartus and cremaster muscles to contract. Those muscles contract and pull the testes up closer to the body where they can remain warmer. When the testes are too warm, that stimulates those muscles to relax and that allows the testes to hang a little further from the body. To give you an idea of how dramatic this change is, here are some actual photographs that show you the action of the cremaster muscle. On the picture to the left, the testes are cool, and the action of the cremaster muscle has pulled the testes very close to the body to keep them warmer. In the photograph to your right, the testes are warm, and so these muscles have been allowed to relax, and the testes are hanging further from the body where they can stay cool. Even though the testes are found outside of the body cavity, it's still important that they remain connected to the rest of the body systems. And that connection is managed through the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord is what connects the testes to the rest of the body systems. It contains some very important structures, including the testicular artery, bringing blood from the aorta to the testes, the pampiniform plexus, which gathers the cool blood from the testes to carry it back to the vena cava, uh, the testicular nerve, which is very important both for motor control of the muscles and glands associated with the testes, and for sensation. There's a lot of sensory function associated with the testes, which makes a lot of sense. If you are going to take these valuable organs and put them outside the protection of the body cavity, they should be very sensitive to encourage protection. The spermatic cord also contains lymphatic vessels to help drain extra fluid from the scrotum so the scrotum doesn't swell. And, very important, the ductus deferens, the tube that carries the sperm from the testes into the body cavity so that it can mix with secretions coming from the various glands before going into the urethra to be ejected from the body. If we take a closer look at the testis itself, each testis is a combined endocrine and exocrine gland. 
we take a look at the exocrine function of the testes, the exocrine function of the testes is to produce a secretion, the sperm, that it will be released to the outside of the body. The sperm are made in the seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules are long coiled up tubes found inside the testes where the sperm are actually produced. The seminiferous tubules contain two important types of cells. First, we have the germ cells. These are the cells that will actually divide by the process of meiosis in order to produce the sperm. The other cells are called sustentacular cells. The sustentacular cells are much larger and they have the important job of providing nutrients to the sperm and removing waste from the area. It's important that the sustentacular cells have the ability to remove waste and provide nutrients to the sperm. The sustentacular cells are held together very tightly by tight junctions. They're held together so tight that they form what's called the blood testis barrier, where molecules from the blood cannot get between the sustentacular cells to get to the sperm. The only way for things to get to and from the sperm is to go through the sustentacular cells. This blood testis barrier is very important when we consider what happens during the process of meiosis. When we start with a normal cell that divides twice to produce four different cells. The sperm are all different from each other and they're different from the original cell. That means they don't have the same cell identity markers. That means that the immune system would attack and destroy the sperm helps to keep the sperm from being exposed to the components of the blood like antibodies and white blood cells that could destroy them. The endocrine function of the testes is to produce testosterone. Testosterone is produced by clusters of cells called the interstitial cells.